Your destination is on the left. Don't he look the same as he always has? <laughs> That's diddle. That's a little diddle. That's a little diddle. <laughs> Of course, this is my grandma and grandpa. Here's my great grandmother and my great granddad right there. Right there is a great grandma and great grandpa. She's born in 1900 even. Wow. And then Uncle Bob. Of course, this is a picture of all of us. Me, my mother, me and my mother and Derek. Jimmy, my youngest brother, and then BJ, my little nephew BJ, of course, he goes to meet him, he's grown. Huh. And I thought this guy come to me, yeah. and he said, we're going for a ride. I said, we are. And he said, yes, yeah. so we're going to go for a ride. And I... Well, I just He's sit there and talk to him, you know, and he said, he said, do you want to go for a ride? And I said, well, I didn't know. I didn't know where he was going to take me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I could see him just as plain as day. He was real thin like him, and he didn't have any hair. He had, had shaved. He wore a shave. His hair was all shaved off, and he was kind of dark. And but he helped me get in that buggy or get in that what kind of vehicle we got into. He helped me get in. Now he didn't. I don't guess. I, I'm a thinking he did. Help me get into that car or that whatever it was that we got into, and we went for a ride. We went all around, all up in the hospital, and I said. I said, right there is where my husband was at. I said, that's where he passed away at, right there. And I come to where Derek, I mean, uh, BJ and Nikki slept. And I said, that's where my uh, uh, niece, I mean, my grand, uh, granddaughter and grandson, I said, they slept here when their grandpa was laying here. Okay. Well, we come on up. We got up to that section. He let me out. You think it was maybe the orderly pushing you around in a wheelchair when you first got there? Somebody said that it was the route, the route that they I had to go to take me to wherever, whatever. See, they had to take me all up in through there to go into that big old machine to get that, uh, what, what do you call it, when you put your body, they put your body in. Oh, MRI, yeah, yeah. MRI. Well, see, I had to have one of them. Now, I knew that. I knew what that was. But, I mean, I knew this other too, but I don't know. It, it was just something just plain as day to me, but I don't know. Hmm. I don't remember them guys. I saw the guy that took me up there to get my MRI, he was the one that was was fixing, was going to drive me. And the one that, want, one that drove me, he got mad at me because I wouldn't let him go and do my, what was it again? I'm going to do something else again. And I told him no. I wasn't let him. <laughs> Always going to do them extra tests on you probably. <laughs> And I, I, I just told them plain. No. Yeah, you know, you know the hospitals of business. Well, they, they, they try to give you the works. Yeah. You know, they try to sell you the windshield wipers, and you know, oh, you got tires that are wore down. We ain't gonna replace all tires and all that good stuff. And they wanted to, they wanted to put me up, put a, a thing here to keep my blood, you know. And I, I didn't want them to, but they finally talked me into having another. But they had done oh, one. IV. Put one over here. Yeah. They put one over here, and it was all messed up. And then they, 
They said, well, we'll put one over here. We'll put it over here. And see, I still got a, still got a scab that won't come off yet from that last one I had. No, oh, that, that. And uh, you can just imagine how long that's been. Well, remember what I told you. They're, pra they're practitioners. Like Joe said, it's right in the name. They're practicing medicine. They're yeah. practicing on you. Yeah. Exactly what they were doing. Somebody well, was. Yeah, because it just seemed to me like, you know, I, I don't even remember seeing the faces of a lot of them people. Yeah, but if you're if you're going if you're not coherent when you go in there, it, it it's like that. Yeah. You know. I'm gonna get me a cigarette if y'all don't mind. No, me. not at all, not at all. But, I'll be uh, right back. Alex anyway, I yes, finally I finally come through, and one day, the one morning, the one the nurse come in, and she says, "I'm going to do this. I'm going to prep you this morning." I said, "Okay." Yeah. She says, "You're going home today." I said, "I am." She said, "Yeah." I said, "You're going home today." I said, "Well, good, good. I'm hard. I'm hard <laughs> to go home." I bet. I so, just, that's not. Uh, I I don't like being in the hospital at all. Oof, it's the worst place to be. Yeah. My goodness. Well, see, I, well, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm not a person. I don't never get sick. I don't never get sick. And I said, this hit me. It hit me like a ton of brick. And I don't know. I remember uh, having this bad cough. And my daughter says, I'm taking you to the doctor. Yeah. So she took me to the doctor. Next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. Of course, I guess that, that's what that, that's where the, the doctor sends you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, Goodness that's gracious. right. And and then I, I I stayed there. I stayed there pretty close to seven days. Yeah, Oof, it's too long. It's much too long. What's up? Oh, yeah, there you go. Nice. <laughs> but. Uh, well, I was glad, but I, my therapist come this morning, and he uh, he wanted me to do a exercise, and he told me this morning. He said, "I've already seen some improvement, and you ain't done nothing yet." <laughs> so he talked pretty pretty good. So I hope, and I'm a hoping yeah. that I'm gonna be going on. I mean, be. That I won't, they won't be here coming to see me much longer. What, is, what does everybody call you? What's, uh, do you? Do you go by a specific uh, name that everybody uses for you? Like they do, my, like do, my, sorry. they do what? Oh, like my mom, she likes everybody to call her Mama Jan. Oh yeah. Do you have that? Well, about all my grandkids call me Grandma, or well, the the younger ones call me uh, something else or. I think my youngest ones over here calls me Nana, and, and uh, or whatever they can think of. <laughs> they call their own grandma, and uh, but I think about all of them. I believe now Derek calls me Granny. I don't know why, he calls me Granny. <laughs> but I believe Steve calls me. Now Derek calls me Grandmother, and I believe it's Steve this one called me Granny. That, that sounds like Steve. <laughs> that sounds like Steve. <laughs> and then I got another grandson, that third brother. I think he calls me Grandma. About all of them calls me Grandma. Oh, okay. that's nice. I like that. I can't wait to have some grandbabies myself. Yeah. How, how many? How many grandkids do you have? Well, <laughs> too many. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. Uh, Let's see, Steve has got what, four? Right. Uh, Derek don't have any. Nikki's got two. Um, Jimmy, I don't know whether he's got any or not. I don't know too much about him. He's one of my grandsons, but he, his, his uh, grandma and, and daddy never would let us have too much to do with him, so we didn't. We didn't know him that much. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Steve and Derek kept your hands full anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then uh, then I've got uh, 
Sonia, one of my daughters, she's got two. Got one daughter that lives up in the uh, up in uh, Springfield. She's got one. <laughs> got on she has five kids. Huh? Yeah, five kids total. That's a lot. Five kids. Yeah. You have. Were you, were you born out here in this area? No, I was born in Alabama. Oh, okay. My we we moved from Cornersville, Mama said, and. I was born in um, uh, I forget the name of the town. Right down here, right across, not too far from across the state line. Oh, okay, like a Muscle Shoals area, or yeah, right there. across, about across from Muscle Shoals. I, I know it's well as I know my name, but anyway, that was where I was born. And then my daddy was a sharecropper, so. We moved to Wayne County, and then we lived in Wayne County off and on around different counties over there, and and then we wound up in another place. We moved, we went back that way. <laughs> Daddy was just, you know, he sharecropped, like I say, and he just... Whenever he this one would wear out, he had to find another one. So it's just wherever you know. What was it, what was sharecropping like? What they, was, if a person has got some ground and he'd like to have it ten, you know, somebody to plant corn or whatever they want to plant in it to raise and keep them keep from leaving the ground open. Mm -hmm. So that's what he did. And if he'd find the one, it would pay him to go and do it. Then he would do it. And we'd, we'd just plant corn or cotton or... Mama would always make the best garden of any of them. Yeah. And, and I remember her making one, me and my husband, we just, we hadn't been married too long and we'd come back down here for vacation. And she said, well, I'm going to cook supper tonight. So I said, okay. And we lived, she lived over here, and they lived over here in Centerville then. And uh, she said, I'm going to cook supper. And well, she cooked up a bunch of green beans and okra, cornbread, squash, I don't know. And we had big, fat, brown, green, or mm. ripe tomatoes, you know. And I like to die. <laughs> so, so you were never underfed? I mean, I I got an it boy. It, I thought it was. I thought he was going to have to take me to hospital. <laughs> it hurt my stomach so bad that I couldn't. I couldn't even hardly sit up. Had to go to the store and get me some pep dog. Oh dear. <laughs> was, was, was sharecropping a was that a tough lifestyle? Uh yeah. It was for the person that really did it. The family, you know, that couldn't afford, you know. Their own land. And he, he, the, the government all uh, would furnish him a team of horses. Okay. Or mules, whichever one. And then if he got them paid for before that season was over, he got the horses. But if he didn't, well, they'd take them mm. at the end of the season. So then if he then had to go and find him another property, bunch of land or whatever then he had to purchase them another pair of horses to use that's a hustle that that was hard yeah absolutely did and you do uh, that your whole life mama mama she bought her a cow and they they carried that calf with them everywhere they moved <laughs> to every time they moved they hooked that cow to the back of the wagon and did it have a name did the cow have a name? Yeah. Yeah, her name was Tenny. Tenny. Tenny the cow. Tenny. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> she was a good little Jersey. Nice. Did you have to do did you have to milk the cows and do all that stuff and, and work the Mama did. I I never could milk a cow. Now, is it a special technique there? I'd go with my brother. My brother would tell me. I had an older sister. I don't know why she wasn't with us, but uh she she was always sickly because she she had a heart defect when she was born. So uh, 
I would go with my brother, and I'd, t I'd ask him, I said, let me, let me try that, let me try that. And I could not get no milk come out of them things for nothing. <laughs> and he said, oh, this is where you do it. And he'd do, and he'd turn it right in my face. Oh, no. Every time. But he'd just do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's, that's what we did. Did you have like normal uh, chores that you were required to do and like your regular mm -hmm. help to upkeep yeah. the house and all that? Yeah, we had to help, you know, like bring up our water and and do the cleaning, help mama wash, and we very seldom had anything to arm. Maybe something we might have, maybe daddy's Sunday shirts or, you know, something like that, or Sunday clothes. But but we always had to help with washing and hanging them out. Yeah. And did, and did you go to regular, were you in regular school too? or, or yeah. You, yeah. What was that, what was school like back then? Nothing like what it is today. <sighs> Nothing. What, how big was your school? About, uh, oh, probably the the whole school probably would be about, I'd say probably about 25. 25 people? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was in a room, when I first started to school, I was in a room and they wouldn't let me start because uh, I wasn't old enough. And then Mama said, well, she's got to go. She said, she's got to go because she runs us crazy. She's wanting to go to school. So they finally, they said, well, send her on, send her on. And I think it was about five that was in my class when I went. But they, they wouldn't give me no book, so I quit. I wouldn't go to school no more. <laughs> and... Uh, the teacher wrote Mama a note and said, tell her to come on, we'll get her a book of some kind. And I remember them, them giving me, I know you probably have heard of them, a farmer's... Farmer's Almanac? Almanac, mm -hmm. yeah. But the book was about this big square, and I wrote in the book, and I reckon that must have satisfied me till I come up to get into the... See, they were primers then, and mm -hmm. not not pre uh, not preschool or nothing like that. They were primers, and I was in primer, and then I went to the first grade. Okay. I had this, like I said, I had a sister who was older than me, but she she couldn't keep up or something. Anyway, I went to the first grade with her, and I finished the eighth grade with her. Same year. Oh really? Oops. I guess. <laughs> and I didn't get to go to high school because we lived so far out that they wouldn't send a bus down there unless they had at least five kids. And they had them. Okay, one by one dropped out before school started. And it got down to two, got down to three. They said, well, we don't think we can send a bus down there that far to pick up three. Right. So they kept on the hollering, and finally they was going to do this other one, and then they then they decided they wouldn't send. So I left. I lost out on my high school on account of that. What was it? What was the place like you were living at at the time? My what? What What was the home like you were living at during that time? Um, normal, I guess. We had to study our. We had our lessons to stutter it, stud at night. We had our homework that we had to do, like bring up water or bring in stove wood or yeah. whatever, you know, like that. But did you wish you had gone to high school? At the time, I wanted to. Yeah. But then after I missed that first year, then I didn't want to go to high school. I don't blame you. Because <laughs> <laughs> we moved to Lewisburg. Daddy said, you got to go to school. You got to go to school, okay. I wasn't going to go, but anyway, I went. And the school that they had was three stories high. Square brick, uh -huh. three stories high. And I had to go up them steps. 
and I didn't know where I was going, you know, because I didn't know where my whatever class that I took first, I didn't know where it was at, and, and I just get so frustrated <laughs> trying to find it. And so finally, I, I toughed it out for, I think, about two or three weeks. And I come home one evening. I told Mama, I said, I ain't going no more. I'm not going no more. <laughs> and Daddy said, well, go and get your job. Okay. So I went and got me a job. What was that? I was selling popcorn at the theater. <laughs> That's not a bad job. No, it was good. <laughs> Uh, that's what I did. And I, I sold popcorn at that theater for oh, probably about two years. Uh -huh. And uh, then I don't know what I did after that. It wasn't too long I met my man and <laughs> <laughs> left. <laughs> Where would y'all go? Yeah. How'd y'all meet? Oh, uh, well, he was in service and I, we met there when I was selling the popcorn. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you had so sweet. And, uh, <laughs> But it didn't pan out. He didn't. He he just wasn't marrying kind. Yeah. And uh, and then Mom and them moved to Wayne County, and I went over there and stayed a while. And and I just I babysit. And I went stayed with people and different things till I come of age where I could get out. I mean, I didn't get out because my parents was mean to me or wanting me out or anything like that. It just, I wanted, I wanted out where I could, you know, get to know people. Because mm -hmm. we always lived in, on the farm, uh, most of all my life. And then, after, after that, then I'm, I'm, came to, I went to Ohio, went to Dayton, Ohio, and went up there with a friend, and that's when I met my husband, uh, when I married, when I lived till he died. Okay. Were you working while you were up in Dayton? I worked uh, a little bit. I didn't, not enough to say that I really worked. Yeah. I worked up here at Murray, Ohio, and when we moved back down here, and man, I didn't, I didn't like that one little bit. I didn't like there. What did your husband do for a living? He was a locksmith. Okay. His daddy was a locksmith. And he was a getting old and he needed a little help. So that's, that's when we thought about moving back down here because my parents was old, you know, and they need a little help. And uh, so we decided we'd come back and so he come back and he just that locksmith just fell right in with him he just like he had been doing it all his life hmm. and uh, that's what he did till he got where he couldn't wasn't able to do it and uh and i i worked a little while at murray and i quit i didn't like her <laughs> <laughs> How, how I guess I this? just didn't like pub, public you, working, I guess. I got my biggest problem. Yeah, I understand that completely. How, how, how did you end up in this house? We moved down here. My, uh, my brother was uh, looking for us a house. And he found us two oh, it's, uh, up in town. And uh, so when we got down here, they had sold them. So there we sat without anything, you know. And uh, my daughter worked over here at uh, Busy Bee Market. I don't know if you ever been around enough to know where that was at, mm -hmm. over there on Buffalo Road. Uh, that's where she worked. And we, uh, we talked to the man that she was working for. And he said, well, he said, I usually always have a house empty, you know, but he said, I don't have one now. And he said, but I now I got this old house right here. If you want to live in it a little while till you can find something, he said, you're, you're welcome to it. 
So he said, there's some trash out there in the yard. And he said, I'll have the city come and get that and clean it up on the outside. And the house wasn't bad inside. Not really. It hmm. was needed a lot of cleaning, but I mean, it wasn't as far. It had good hardwood floorings on it, but it was an old house. And we lived in it for almost a year, and then this house come available. So we bought it. It's a lovely house. Since. Uh, how many years is that? Since 72. Okay. Yeah, just uh, 49 years. That's nice. That's great. Ah. I'd love to live in one place for 49 years. <laughs> we lived, I mean, we've done a lot of work on it. You probably can't tell it, but we did. We've done a lot of work on it. We had a new tip metal roof put on it about five years ago now. Yeah, it looks great. We had, we had a leak right over there in that corner. And see, some of it is still, mm -hmm. still hadn't, hadn't got that fixed yet. But we had a bad leak over there in that corner, and we hired people to come in there and cut. Nobody ever fixed that leak. They never could fix it. So the last time we got these boys to come, and they said, yeah, that we can do it, we can do it. So me and Don said, well, we're going to go up to uh, Shawnee's and get us a bite to eat, and we'll be right back. So we went up there, and we came back, and the boys was gone, but we still had our leak. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I told Don then, I said, that's the last penny that we're going to put out on this, that leak. I said, we're going to get us a roof put on. And it cost us about three or $4,000, but we did it, and we've not had a leak since. Not on wood. And this is wood. Yes, it is. It <laughs> is certainly is wood. Well, I, hope, I, I hope that that leak never comes back myself. <laughs> oh, <so. laughs> oh my! But yeah, that's, that's about it. And you love having your family around, though. I have about all of them around. I got a son lives in Hoynewall. Missy lives in uh, Springfield, and or Spring yeah Springfield, and then one daughter lives here, and one lives just up. And then I've got nieces and nephews and cousins. Right? Yeah. But I don't have but one brother live here, and i got one brother lives in Dayton, Ohio. And that's all my my family. My husband's family is all gone. And that's, that's just about the size of our family now. Yeah. Left. Yeah, well, it seems like you got a lot around here. Yeah. Which is nice. Oh, we have some good times sometimes, especially like on Thanksgiving. We get a pretty good house full. I hope you come by one Thanksgiving. But this, uh, this last Christmas is the first time since we've lived here that we didn't have nothing here at this house. I was in the hospital. Oh, oh right. That's right. That's right. I was. I got sick. And then that's just like. You know, like I say, I never was sick. I never was sick. And then something hit all at once, and and then I've been sick twice. That I don't know what that was the first time. Yeah. We didn't have Christmas here. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> we had Thanksgiving here, but we didn't have Christmas. Yeah. But we never really had Christmas after the Alpha all of the grandkids, you know, started coming and uh, they wanted, you know, be at their home. So they would do their home and then they'd come to our house then. And just, we just, it worked out fine. Nice. That's nice. We didn't ever, we never did try to, you know, say, well, you need to come. You know, a lot of the grandparents say, if they got children, grandchildren, they want them to come to their house. I know my mama would have liked for us, and we went, me and my husband would always go down there. They lived out here at Deerfield, and we would always, we never missed a Christmas or anything. That we didn't go. We always go to their house. Yeah. Family's pretty important then. Yeah. 
Absolutely. That's tough. That's just about it. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's enough? Oh, yeah, of course. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love I, I could listen to you all day long. I like it. <laughs> it's great. Joe, did you see them old pictures in the living room? We're I heard some a lot about up. you, Joe. Uh, Steve's what? always talking about his buddy Joe. I sent him a blank check that, that, that says uh, to make sure that that he tells you only the good things and he can fill in the blanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So, so long as he lives up to it. <laughs> That's my mother, June. That's my Uncle Ronnie. That's my Aunt Sonia there. And then my Aunt Missy. And then my Aunt Christy, you met her. Or no, maybe you had That got me. <laughs> that got me scared me too. <laughs> it was lovely to meet you. Yeah, thank you. See you, you later. Have a great evening. I'll see you later on. You too. All right. Bye now. Bye. We'll see you.